So what we're going to do is going to have a quick look at um, some more of the subdivision to modeling tools. And we're going to take an example of this gear lever and we're going to just work through and um, show you some of the different tools and how we might build this. Um, it isn't a de facto way you might work, um, but it's just a, a way we can explore this. So I'm going to use the um, an edit point curve and I'm going to set up for degree one uniform um, because actually laying this out is easier. Um, in the original version of uh, sub D's in Alias, we were only able to um, put in a um, single span curve um, or faster curve like this and work off them when we did the extrude. But um, you'll be able to now use um, other tools as well or tools with multiple degree in this as well. So first of all, I'm just going to extrude up here and then I'm going to carry on and move this out so I get um, some kind of shape. At the moment, this is just set up for uh, a single flat surface. I'm going to slowly massage this out and get it into to where I want it to be. So I've just done the extrude. Next is to just explore this a little bit with um, the modeling tools. So I can pick CVs, I can move them. Um, obviously, that's not maybe as controlled as I want to be. So I can use my transform tools. I can maybe slide them. Uh, a bit more uh, specifically in this case. So I can bring them out down here, bring them down, slide them into place. Now in 2020.2, we added in the ability to use the pit walker. So uh, let's just move that, just get it into where I want it to be. So I can actually use the pit walker to walk along the CV. So that's control and the arrow keys. Switch to here and let's just go back to the transform tools. Keep walking down. Slide this into the right place. And let's go down to this one. Just move that. A little bit more tweaking to get this in the right place or roughly the right place. Just push that out a bit, slide him round. As I say, this is just a practical use of how you might use the tools um, and showing you how some of the tools you so work. So first of all, I've, I've created a sub D plane. No real um, great shakes there. I'm going to move this out in the Y direction. Let's just um, get it into a rough place. And then we're going to go in, just center my view, and we're going to pick the edges and extrude them back. So I'm going to go in and pick these edges and then these edges. I'm just going to do a few things at the same uh, in combination to show you know, how I might use this. So in here, I've got a normal direction. I'm going to go global, so I'll make sure it goes back in one direction. And you can see I've overbuilt that. That was done purposefully just so I can show you something else. So if I go and pick the CVs on this um, sub D, I say move, alt, snap, middle mouse button, snaps them into the center. And as you'll see, the sub Ds are not updating the shading because we're in diagnostic shade. So I'd have to come out, um, re-hit the diagnostic shader, or I could just switch into fast shading mode and everything I create from now on will update. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to pick this edge. And as you've seen in probably the other videos, if I shift middle mouse button, that selects everything in between because it's had. Um, if you remember in here, we've got um, the selection options, where are we? preferences, selection options, and middle mouse button is add. So using shift and that mouse control enables me to pick those in one. And extrude these again, I want to do it globally. And this time I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to drag this across with the Alt key. So now that will snap to the center line because it's snapping to the grid space as I've got laid out. It's not actually visible, but it is doing that. Let's go in and pick this CV because we've got two CVs lying over each other. And in this case, I just want to pull that back because I'm going to do another operation in a minute. I might actually just slide that one along as well. And let's just flip around here. So 
on the bottom of those two. Slide that back so that I can do the next step. So one of the next steps in this is I'm going to go in and insert. So if you're used to using alias, you'll grab the edge, slide it along to where you want it to be, and accept that by just deselecting or moving on. If, however, you're used to using Maya, then you'll want to use the perpendicular option. So I can go and pick on the edge and put it in where I am perpendicular to the next edge. So let's just bring that back a little bit. My interaction handles are slightly different as well. There we go. And I've created those in. Now, at this point, I want a bridge between those two. So I'm going to go into the bridge tool. Comes up one subdivision. That's great for what I'm doing. Pick this edge, pick this edge, space bar to accept. And I've closed that out. And then I can very quickly fill that hole with the fill hole tool. And I start to get some topology that's looking reasonable. It's not perfect. And then we can go in up here and do the same. So uh, I'm going to go in and insert. As I use alias, I'm just going to go back in and turn it back to parallel. As you could see just then, it was a little bit more natural to me. Bridge between these two areas, accept that, fill the hole. And you can see the subdivision is updating because I'm using diagonal uh, toggle shade. And very quickly, we can get to a point where we've got um, the actual base model there that we can work with. So it might be that we go and pick some faces and modify them. I'm just going to go in here so I can see what's happening as I move them. Just pull those out a little bit, give it a bit more shape. And we might want to pick this CV, shift select, middle mouse button, all of those CVs and just slide those back a little bit in the Y. And for my next operation and next few steps, I'm just going to have a look down here because um, I need to make sure those aren't quite flat. So let's just move that up. I've got all those CVs in one, which is great. So I'm just making sure that's not quite flat because my next operation will become fairly obvious um, in a second. So on the sketch, if we turn off the shading and we just look in, you can see there's a hard edge here. So that's the next thing I want to do with the sub um, So let's go back to toggle shade. So how do I do that? Well, if I pick this edge from here, and remember, shift middle mouse select allows me to do the selection I want all the way around. I can then say crease. Now that's created me a hard edge on here, F12 to you know turn off the controls. And I can now see there's a nice hard edge just showing up there. Might not want it quite as hard an edge as that, so turn off those controls. And I can now go in and maybe put in a surface fillet. So surface fillet. Let's bring the options up, see what we've got. If you want the radius to be a lot, a lot smaller than that, so let's make it one. Um, let's make it a circular fillet and like, make it caudal, because as it flows down here, we've got some angles changing uh, quite dramatically. When you're working with sub-Ds, make sure you get the options picked so that you get the different sides. I'm just then going to work down and select all of these different surfaces very fairly specifically, to be honest, um, because I want to make sure that I don't get any other surfaces in, in the selection um, when I'm doing it. So build. Chord length of 10 is going to be way too big. Obviously, I've changed the value before. Rebuild that, and we get the fillet. Now, the great thing about that is if we turn that off, we've got a mixture of sub D's working with nerves. And uh, that means now that I can go and modify the sub D and have the nerves update. However, this is a fillet, so it does take a little bit of calculation. So I'm going to go in and suspend the history, and then I can go in and tweak and change the, the control frame of the, the sub D's a little bit, maybe slide this back. Um, let's go down here and just do a few things as well. You can see here it's wrapping around nicely because it's a caudal fillet. Um, let's take those points and just move them up a little bit more. And that one. Look at the side view and do that. So I've made some changes. And the fillet hasn't updated yet. Um, but when I go in here, I can say, take the suspend off. 
and then it will recalculate the fillet. Looks like I missed a, a piece of the fillet out, but um, you can see the best way of operating your sub Ds with nerve surfaces attached is just to suspend the history, meaning that you can carry on with the modifications freely in sub Ds, not waiting for the nerves to recalculate all the time. So that's really a quick example of just you know looking through a lot of the different tools, showing you how some of them work in combination, working with sub Ds. Um, in alias, but then also adding some uh, other nerves geometry to that. Um, hopefully that's uh, of help and watch out for the next video, um, which will come shortly.